In this video, we are going to estimate population proportions by finding confidence intervals for proportion data. So just as we have in the other distributions, we are going to be looking for certain conditions to be met, and then we're going to find a point estimate and a margin of error. So the process is the same, the calculations might be a little different. So when we are finding our point estimate, we're going to be looking at the sample proportion. So if you'll recall, we called that p hat, the same way that we compared mu, which was population, to x bar, which was sample. p is population and p hat is sample. So just as we used x bar for means, we're now using p hat for proportions. And we're going to ensure that a simple random sample is used the conditions for a binomial distribution are met, which just, just means success and failure. And then remember, this one is different. So we're not looking for a sample size of at least 30 or the population distribution to be nearly normal. We are looking for the number of successes and the number of failures to be at least 10. So n times p hat has to be greater than or equal to 10 and n times q hat, or 1 minus p hat, is greater than or equal to 10. If that's the case, then we're going to be, notice, going back to our normal model. So we're going to be using norm inverse instead of t inverse, as we did in our last video. And we're going to go back to finding that standard error using p hat q hat over n, and then taking the square root. And remember, I keep calling it q hat. Um, your book does not call it q hat, but it's really just 1 minus p hat. So they keep writing 1 minus p hat. I call it q hat. So if you ever hear me say that and you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'm just replacing this with q. That's all. So let's take a look. Again, we're going to go through this step by step um, sort of by hand. So I'm not going to calculate it as we go, but I'm going to show you the calculations. We have a survey of 345 randomly selected students, found that 301 students think there is not enough parking on campus. Find the 90% confidence interval for the proportion of all students at the university who think there is not enough parking. So again, before we look at the steps I've already laid out, as you're reading, you should be sort of labeling things. So N is 345, that's how many people were surveyed. 301 is going to be x. x is how many think there's not enough parking. So that's considered the number of successes. And then we're finding a 90% confidence interval. That means c equals 0.9. And of course, then alpha is 1 minus 0.9, which is 0.1. Now we're going to let um, Excel calculate that stuff for us, but just to recall, that's what we're doing. Now, step one, identify the variable values. Hey, guess what? We just did that. Um, the only thing I didn't do is actually find p hat. So remember, p hat is just x over n. So that's 301 divided by 345, which I have not really rounded. A lot of people make the mistake of calling this 0.87 and then using 0.87 here and then 1 minus 0.87, which would be 0.13. And then this value is much, much different because you've rounded way too much. So do not round that value. Do yourself a favor. Now, we're going to find our critical value. And again, we should be good at that. We did that in section 8.1, and we did it last week when we talked about the critical values um, for the normal model. But again, all I'm looking at, and I think I use norm inverse here, but I can use norm s inverse. And then remember, we're thinking about this guy and saying, okay, if we have 90% here in the middle, then we have 5% here and 5% here. So this value would be 0.95 because there would be 95% to the left. So that's why I've used 0.95 here. And that's really the biggest mistake that people make as they forget and put 0.90 here and then they get the wrong critical value. So norm.s.inverse 
or you can use norm inverse and then comma zero one. And then I'm really just plugging things into that margin of error formula, the 1.645. Notice I'm taking the very long, whoops, long value for p hat and then one minus that very long value. And when we're doing this in Excel, it's super duper easy to do because we're just going to point to the different cells and then divided by N. And this gives me my margin of error of 0 0.029542. Step three, we have to find the interval. So take our um, P hat value, subtract E, add E to get your lower and upper um, estimates and then we write the interval mathematically. So 0 0.0843, I'm sorry, 0 0.843 and 0 0.92. And again, these are percentages. So whenever you're dealing with a proportions question, the solution is going to be percentages. So find the 90% confidence interval for the proportion of all students who think there's not enough parking. So this is the proportion or percentage of students who think there's not enough parking. So notice when I wrote it as a as my interpretation, I'm saying with 90% confidence, we estimate that between 84.3% and 90.2%. So even though when I write my interval, I write it like this as a decimal, when I'm writing my interpretation, I'm going to actually use it as a percentage. And that's how many students, what percent of students think there's not enough parking. Let's take a look now at that same question. Um, and this time I want to have Excel do all of the work. Now, remember one thing that I sort of glossed over when we did this by hand is checking that NP is greater than or equal to 10 and NQ is greater than or equal to 10. So notice here what I've done, my very first cells that I'm going to check is B2, which is going to be N, times B5, which is going to be P hat, and B2 times B6, and I'm going to hope that both of those are greater than or equal to 10. That's going to check my conditions. Now, in terms of having Excel do the work, again, P hat, if you'll recall, was just X over N, so that's B1 divided by B2. Q hat is, in your book, is called one minus P hat, so really it's just one minus whatever I get in cell B5. The standard error, if you'll recall, is the square root of p hat q hat over n. Um, one thing I want to point out, an area that a lot of people make mistakes, is students will put the parentheses here at b5 times b6, and then this b2 ends up not being a part of the square root function. So you need to make sure that if you are going to use b5, b6 in parentheses, that you have an extra parenthesis here. Um, but remember, it's not required, so I can just have B5 times B6 divided by B2, just like that, with a parenthesis on each end, because multiplication division is the same step in uh, the order of operations. Critical value, if you'll recall, we have, if this is the confidence level, then what is found for the tails is to take 1 minus co the confidence level and divide it in half, since that's what's in each tail. And so if you'll notice when I'm finding my critical value, I have norm S inverse of B3, which is this area, and then one minus B3 over two, which is giving me one of the tails. So that's going to give me this um, number so that I can calculate the critical value of that position on my normal curve. And then we have the margin of error, which is simply the standard error times the critical value to get the margin of error. And then just as before, lower limit, upper limit by taking the observed, I'm sorry, the P hat is the center, and then minus the margin of error and plus the margin of error. So now that we have taken us through all of the cells, let's go ahead and plug in numbers. 301 out of 345 with a confidence level of 0.9. Everything populates, I get at least 10 here, at least 10 here, so I know I can continue. I've got p hat, one minus p hat, standard error, critical value, margin of error, and then most importantly, the same two values that I had found previously, 84.3% to 90.2%.
I do have one of these for you to try on your own, but there is a little bit of a trick to this one. So if you read through this and kind of get stuck right away, um, don't be hard on yourself. We're going to go through it together. If you feel up to the challenge, press pause, try this question, and when you're ready, press play to see how you did. So the difference here, again, is that I am not given an X and an N value. So things are a little bit different. So they have 820 American adults, so that is still N. So I'm given N, and I'm given that a 95% confidence interval. What I'm not given is X. So it says 61% said they would travel less this year. So what they've actually given me is they've given me P hat. So they gave me P hat is 0.61, so I didn't even have to have an observed value. And in fact, most students who try to come up with an observed value kind of make a mistake there. So just use 0.61 because it's the exact percentage they gave us. And then notice everything else populated. I got Q hat, which is one minus P hat. I still have the standard error. I still have the critical value. I still have the margin of error. I can check my conditions over here. They're both at least 10 and then find that the proportion of adults who said they would travel less this year for non-business trips is between 57.7% and 64.3%. Just as we did with means, we're going to take a look at some of the calculations that can be done with the margin of error for a proportions question.